Christmas candle. He has come into the world. We light this candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. He has come. A boy has been born. A son has been given. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to all. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Man, I wonder what it was like to really be, to be born in a manger. I know, right? I wonder what ever happened to baby Jesus. He grew up. Wait, you're telling me that the baby Jesus from the Christmas story is the same baby Jesus as the adult walk on water Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess... I guess I never really put those two concepts together. Wow. Well, I wonder what ever happened to that guy. He went to the cross. That's the same guy? Yeah. Baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. Yeah. I, I mean, he grew up. I mean, there's some time in there. You know, he grew up. He, uh... He taught people, he lived a perfect life, he, uh, he died on the cross, he came back to life, you know. And now he lives in our hearts. That's the same guy? The Jesus that lives in our hearts? Yeah. <laughs> this is really, okay. I guess I just didn't put two and two together. This is, whew. <laughs> wow. Merry Christmas, Denver. I guess we should just try to view Christmas instead of one isolated event and more of an ongoing story about our salvation. Yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. Great idea. Good morning and Merry Christmas to you. I hope you are enjoying the day and that you have been blessed. How much has been asked of you to do this Christmas time and do you feel that perhaps this time of year is asking too much? Christ came into the world so not too much would be asked of you. He came for you. He wanted you and you are on his mind. He loves you and desires the best for you. He expects you to be here, but are you with him or are you on his side and do you know him? Is there anything under your tree this year as a present for Christ? Have you sent a Christmas card to Jesus? Joseph was walking in faith. First he had to have faith in his wife who came to him with a story that few, if any, would believe. He did not. He was going to quietly divorce her. It took a dream. It took an intervention from God so that he would change his mind. It was perhaps too much cheese or too much wine 
that causes mind to change? How can we believe? Why would he believe? Did he have faith? Could he take the risk? He was stuck in a dilemma, but he was to take the chance. Could he be willing to accept what his wife was saying? It was not easy for Joseph, a carpenter, who was to betrothed to Mary. Something precious has been taken away, a bit of taste in the mouth, the very start, the very start of their union. If rumours spread, he would be a laughing stock. Why should this have had to happen to him? He could divorce her quietly because he was a man and he was an honourable man. He decided to stick with her. He took a step of faith to act in his dilemma. He would believe this fanciful story and act upon the words that came to him in a dream. It says this in Isaiah 7 verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Yet even in those days, few people believed in the word of God. They went to the synagogue, they did their duty, they were loyal, they paid the temple tax. But did they believe the text, the words written by God, to them? These texts were hundreds of years old. How could this be possible? What and how could it come about? Yet they should have expected it to happen. At this time of year, when we expect Christmas, when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, when we understand that the prophecy of Isaiah has been fulfilled and that parents were chosen, Mary and Joseph, the son and daughter of David's tribe, they should, we should expect it as they should have expected it. But the, the dilemma was to believe that this prophecy was being fulfilled in them and they needed to act. Is your life like that of Joseph? Are you in the middle of a dilemma? Are you able to take the leap of faith in your Christian life? It may be that you're stuck in religion, which is sterile. And as you celebrate this time of year, you're celebrating the expense of it all, the financial dilemma, and you're struggling with the balance of your bank account and credit card because of the presents you feel obliged to buy. Is this time of year just the world's happy holiday for you? Or do you worship the one? Do you know the one who came into this world to take away the sin of it, its disobedience, so that we might be free, that we could have an amen and hallelujah at this point in this world rather than the depression of boxing day and the looming credit card bill jesus came he fulfilled prof prophecy he believes in you but do you do anything with for him what are you celebrating this Christmas? Is it Jesus or is it the children or grandchildren? Many older folks say to me that Christmas time is a time for children. Well, that's true. The commercials, the TV, the, the stocking filling, the Christmas tree, all these things are for children. Yet, do we tell them what the story is all about? That Christ came into this world, was born for this world, to recapture the lost, to wipe away the loneliness that people feel to help those who are bereaved at this time those who are struggling and in need we celebrate the birth of our lord which means that we are his people and we see and recognize god's promises and showing our faith in the one who came to save us the issue is that the this season has been hijacked by the world and christmas no longer belongs to us it's become a holiday time and i despise that word it's not happy holiday it's merry christmas at one time the church did not celebrate or mark the occasion of christ's birth and death as we do today they probably saw the way it would go and shunned it for the world has turned it into a circus in the 70s, the perfect Christmas was the Morecambe Christmas special as we all sat around the TV to watch it. In the 80s, it was the two Ronnies. 
Since that time, it, the entertainment industry has been lost without these giants, though they do have uh, the likes of Emmerdale and EastEnders and Strictly. But because of that, and because of the way the world is acting, have they failed to recognise the great soap that took place 2,000 years ago, and that was the birth of Christ? During Victorian times, the church got heavily involved in the marketing of Christmas, and over time it's become the institution it is today. But where is Jesus in the Christmas trees, the tinsel and baubles? Where is Jesus in the snowy scenes as we gather around and make merry? Don't get me wrong, I love Christmas. But we must not forget our Saviour. I love Christmas, but I'm expecting a birth. I love Christmas, but it's all about him and not about little and two cartoon car carrots. Christ came into the world to save us, to come and save you and me. He came so that we could be reconciled once again with him. He came so that we could gain our freedom from the trappings of the world. He came from infin infinity and shrank into the size of a baby to fit in a young teenager's womb. The one who measured the universe with his hands, who flung stars into space, he came for you so that you could know freedom, purpose, destiny, love, peace, being at home, and all the other blessings he desires to pour into your life. Our unsung hero of the New Testament had to place his faith because of a dream to become a father, a protector, the teacher, encourager, helper and craftsman to lead the Son of God into a profession which meant he would work with his hands so the Creator once again would create and mend. His hands would fix that which things that were broken would make it whole again to make something new from someone's need, to work and labour so that that which looked like a tree would become something useful and functional and beautiful. The very wood which would become the place of his death, he would use to bless those around him. The father would pass on his skills to the apprentice. His son would move the business forward. Joseph knew his son. He knew where he came from. But do you? Many do not know Jesus, yet he stands before you. Many cannot see him because they choose not to. Yet he sees you and desires that you come to him. The majority disobey, yet Jesus is patient, just as he works on those pieces of wood to make something wonderful. He desires your life so you can become something beautiful, useful, functional and a wonder to behold. He can take your broken pieces that make up your life and make you into something wonderful from you. Just as Joseph did, are you going to make a leap of faith? Are you going to accept the Messiah? Or are you going to quietly divorce him without making a fuss and lose out on the most precious of things in your life, your destiny, your purpose, and leave those presents behind, leave them under the tree, gathering dusts, until another year. This Christmas, do not leave yourself in the dilemma. Choose Christ and see Christmas become Christmas once again and celebrate the birth of a baby rather than the receiving of presents. Celebrate the birth of a baby who becomes a man rather than having to put those presents away or throw them out after a few months because they break down. Celebrate the birth of a baby who becomes your saviour and will give you a present of his life which lasts for eternity. Joseph took a chance to listen to an angel, to listen to God and be blessed. This Christmas time, are you willing to take a chance to listen to God and to be blessed by him so that all of your eternity would be Christmas Day because you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.